Thank you for joining us this evening. I know it's a little bit different of a schedule than usual, um, but my name is Caitlin Bernard Vincent and I am the newest epilepsy manager at Valley Children's Hospital. Um, and so we're really excited to have you here again tonight to join us in a festive 4th of July um, painting that we are doing with Miss Hilda Vandergriff and she does a wonderful job and has been with us um, from the beginning. I think this is maybe our fifth um, painting session and we are going to continue these hopefully um, into the next year and maybe in person one day which will be really exciting. Um, so thank you again for being here. ASI, um, one of our pharmaceutical companies, is a representative of us um, and helping to sponsor these events. So um, a couple of really cool things that I wanted to share with you, some super exciting news. Let me share my screen with you again if I can get this correct, that'll be awesome. Um, is the most updated and exciting thing is that we now, the epilepsy support um, program has a brand new website and so this is really 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 exciting as, as a lot of work has gone into it but this is a um, landing page through Valley Children's um, so feel free honestly to check it out I don't know if you can see it on your screens I sure hope you can um, there's all sorts of things on there and it will be always updated so we've got things about the program we've got events and training um, and there's really just a whole lot of support support systems on here that you can get involved we have two support groups going on right now we'll have some family spotlights which is really awesome um, some mental health pieces videos that we recorded um, and so it's just really kind of a cool way for everyone to stay in contact. And of course, a way to contact me is on there as well. Um, so I just encourage you, if you get a chance to check it out, share the website with everybody. Super easy to find. All you need to do is um, if you just go to Valley Children's homepage um, and it, you'll type in epilepsy support program, the landing page will pop right up. And um, this is all for you guys and all for anybody you know who um, is walking through the life of epilepsy and um, we're just really, really grateful that you're here. Um, it's all about getting the word out and advocating for each other. And um, that's definitely what I'm excited to do. So again, if you have any questions, any concerns, need any support or um, any type of resources, please feel free to reach out to me. I am more than happy um, to make sure that uh, I can reach back out to you and get you any information that you absolutely need. So um, for the sake of time, I will let Ms. Hilda get started um, on the painting and let me know. So if you guys have any questions or you wanna slow down or you want her to repeat something, we've got plenty of time. So feel free to um, either chat in the box, which may be difficult if you're on a cell phone and trying to paint at the same time, um, or you can just unmute yourself. So I will give you privileges to do that and just say, hey, um, can you show me that again? That's not a problem. Um, that's what this is definitely all about. So without further ado, Ms. Hilda, um, feel free to take it from here. Thank you. Well, welcome today to another watercolor uh, art lesson. I'm really happy to um, teach you this beautiful um, floral bouquet American flag painting. Um, you should have all received an outline like this and then that outline should have been transferred to your watercolor paper like this. I'm using the small one for the sake of the demo. Um, and we are going to paint this in steps. Uh, I, before we begin, I do wanna talk to you about the steps that we're gonna do so that way you understand um, the process of it. Um, you're gonna be learning how to do negative painting style, which is painting around shapes. So the first step will be mixing greens. And if you don't have the three uh, primary tubes of paint, we're just using a blue, a red, and a yellow, you can use one of these kits and you can just use um, the colors that you have here. It doesn't have to be exactly like this. And I don't want it to be exactly like this. I want it to be your interpretation. You're the artist. Um, so the first step that you're gonna learn to do is doing all the green background around the shapes of the flower. And it's okay if you go into the flowers with some of the green, don't worry about that. The second step will be learning to paint blue flowers and a few purple flowers. And we're gonna, sh I'm gonna show you how to mix those colors. And then the third step will be to paint the reds, learning to paint um, the red poppies and the red stripes on the flag. And then um, the fourth will be the centers of the flowers and then the extra foliage and then extra details, you know, towards the end. So let's begin. 
Um, so what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your brush and wet it in your water and put some water in your mixing area. So if you have an, like something like this, just use an, you know, an area that you have, and put water in the middle. And then what I want you to do is I want you to mix a green so you can take some yellow. See how I'm just taking some yellow over here. Now I'm gonna clean my brush and take a little bit of that blue color and mix it with the yellow to mix a green. So right now I have a light green, but if I get more paint and mix it over here, I can get a darker green with more blue. So look at all the beautiful greens that you're seeing here already on this plate. And imagine these colors going onto your watercolor paper. And that's what we're gonna do now, okay? So do you all have your colors mixed and ready to go? Okay, so this is what you're gonna do. You're gonna put paint on your brush. So there's the paint, it's on your brush. And you're gonna, let me just demo this for, um, before you put it on the paper. What you're gonna do is you're gonna use the side of your brush like this. See how I'm using the side of my brush like that? And then you can take another color and you can drop it in there or you can take a little bit of yellow and drop it in there like that. What you're gonna do is you're gonna paint around these shapes. So let's start. So there's a flower here at the bottom. Just go around that outline, just going like this with the brush. Did you see how I just went like this? Don't make it perfect. I don't want you to be perfect. And then there's a white flower here. Use the tip and go around those lines just like this see and then drag it see the color how i just pulled it down okay here i go again with the point of my brush the point just pretend like that's a pin that's like a pin there to me and just use that pin going around these little flower shapes and don't try to be too perfect you know you don't have to be too precise just have fun change the color add a little, little bit of yellow to it and just look at how I just did that. It just went down, okay? You could also do this. You can turn your paper around and use the tip again. And you're going around these little shapes, these flower shapes. Look at how I'm just using the brush. I'm just like dancing with this brush. I'm not even lifting it off the paper yet. And then you can come on this side and just do this where the flag is. Just make some, some fun lines. You can get a little bit more yellow, okay? So I'm using the point again now to come around this poppy flower. Look at with my brush, how I'm using that point to go around those outlines. And now I'm gonna take the side of my brush and I'm just coming off the page just like that, okay? So now I'm gonna turn it around. So do you see all these cool, fun? And now I'm gonna just paint a little bit of green in the middle here with my brush. See how I'm using the side of it? And you don't have to go exactly directly to the line of the flowers, just be abstract with it, okay? See that? You can add a little bit of more yellow to make it more of a yellow green. So now I'm gonna come around the bottom of this white daisy with my point. See how I'm just going around those shapes? Then I'm gonna take the side of my brush and I'm just coming down like that. Okay, now I'm gonna add a little bit over here on this side, just coming down with my brush. See this? Just do this, just come straight down and around those flowers. Look, just do this. Look how easy this is, guys. Look at that. Just do this. And one over here and then leave it, okay? You can start to do this now if you want. You can take a little bit more green 
And if you want, while it's wet, you can drop a little bit more color in between some of these shapes. See how I'm doing this? But you don't have to, as long as you have some background. So this is called negative painting, where you just paint it around some shapes. Do you see how you have your shapes are still there? Okay. Are we ready to move on to blue and purple flowers? If you are, I'm ready to show you the next step. Are you ready? So you're gonna clean your brush, take that green off. Some people are saying no. <laughs> okay, I'll wait, I'll wait, <laughs> I'll wait, not a problem. So yeah, just you know, using the side of your brush and dropping in some greens. You can just drop a little bit of extra green in there. But you don't have to fiddle with it too much, you know, just as long as you have a little bit of green because later when you have some of your flowers in there, you can mix more green and you can start to apply more green with the extra foliage that we're gonna add to it. So that's gonna be fun. So I like to see um, some white area. So don't cover it completely green. All right. So I'm cleaning my brush and now I'm taking a paper towel and I'm taking all this green off my mixing area because I don't want to have any green for the blue flowers and the blue of the part of the flag. So now we're just using blue, a little bit of blue, and we're gonna mix a little bit of that blue with red to make some purple flowers because we don't want them all blue unless you want to have them all blue. Now, at this point, you don't have to go with the red, white, and blue colors of this painting if you have this palette right here, like something like this, oh, just make it fun. Make these all kinds of fun colors. You know, if you're um, if you're a young child in this class and you wanna make it colorful with rainbow flowers, that would be really beautiful too, like a spring bouquet. So how, how fun would this be to paint this uh, project with um, children, you know? Um, I think it would be a great project for 4th of July also. So, now I'm taking a little bit of water again. This is watercolor. So I'm taking water right here in my mixing area and I'm taking blue. So that's a light blue. So more water will make your color value light like this. So now if you take more blue, look how dark this value is. It's darker. See that? See how it's darker? It's darker. We have two blues here, a light blue and more of a medium darker blue. But now I wanna show you how to mix just a little bit of a purple right here in this little area here. So what you're gonna do is take a little bit of blue here, clean your brush, right? Just touch a little bit of a red color that you have and mix it here and you'll get a little a purple color here. You see, that's how I made purple with blue and a red. A blue and a red will make, make a purple there. Okay, so since I have purple on my brush, I'm gonna just use it for the flowers. And this is a real simple way to um, paint a flower. So I'm gonna show you first and then you're gonna do it. So, Press and pull, press and pull, press and pull, press and pull, press and pull. Okay, so see that flower or you can, so that's one way of doing these flowers on top of these shapes that you have sketched in here. 
you can you can do them like this. You can paint paint them inside the shapes like this. You can do it like this. See how I just did that? Or you can just do it the way I showed you by doing it like this. And just, you know, pressing and pulling. Okay, I'll take a little bit of this blue. See how I'm pressing and pulling, pressing and pulling this way. Do you see that? See the difference? I actually like this better than that. But these are just two ways of doing it. So, and you wanna leave the center alone. So we have some light purples here. So now I'm just taking this color off my brush now by just cleaning it and dabbing it on a paper towel. And I'm picking up this darker blue with my brush. And it's very important that when you're mixing colors that you have your paint sort of watery and loose like this because this is watercolors. If it's dry, you know, you're gonna end up painting uh, what's called like dry brushing. So, okay, so now there's, there's paint on my brush and I'm gonna paint another flower over here, uh, blue and then this one here, blue and this one blue. We're leaving these two white and this one white. Okay, so now let's paint the one that's here by the flag blue. So again, just press, you can do it like this, press. Look how easy this is. Pressing, pressing. And then if you want, you can just take a little extra paint and kind of fill it in the middle right here like this. Okay, so now we need to paint uh, this one here blue. We can do this one blue. So again, if you don't wanna do the press and pull, you can just take your color and fill in that shape that you um, had left alone when you were doing your greens. Just like that, see? And you don't have to go to the edge. You know, it's, it's kind of fun to just let it um, be kind of loose and abstract because later we can fill in these little white areas um, with more green color. And so now I'm gonna paint this one blue down here. Can you see okay? I mean, the visual, or do I need to turn on my, my light in here? Can you see it okay? Yeah, no, I think it looks great. Okay, okay, good. All right, so now this little one here, use your brush again, press. See how we're just doing? And you can move your paper around to get this side. Okay. While the paint is still wet, you could also take a little bit of a darker blue and just drop it in there, just like this. See how I'm dropping it and it's bleeding out? This is kind of fun too. This is another technique to give your flower a little depth. Okay, now, since you have blue, you're gonna paint the part of this flag here, this square right here, blue. Okay, and just paint it blue. Don't worry about the little white stars. Okay, so now we're gonna do, look at how I'm just using my brush. One stroke, another stroke, and just trying to be careful. I'm using the point of my brush, like a pen, pretending like it's a pen. And I'm going around that little petal, flower petal. So just like that. So you see how there's just the blue square there now? Okay. All right. I'm letting everybody catch up with the blues. And then we're gonna move on to some reds. So I will clean my brush, take that paint off my brush. And now I'm gonna use my paper towel and I'm gonna clean this area of blue. 
taking that blue out, cleaning it, because we are going to use just red now. Or if you want to use pink, again, if you have this palette, look at all these beautiful colors you can decide to use, okay? So now I'm going to take my red, I'm cleaning my, my brush is clean. And again, I'm adding water to the middle. Adding water to the middle here. And I'm just taking red, just a red color. Or if you want to use pink, you can use pink, any color that you decide. But since this is a kind of red, white, and blue painting, I'm going to stick to these colors in the lesson. And so this right now is like a very light, um, kind of a, a reddish, pinky color. But if I want to make it a deeper red, you're going to take that red and just a touch of that blue here. And I'll show you how to mix that, okay? So I'm going to take some red and less water because with less water, your color will be more intense. So less water, more intense. And this is the color that you're also going to be using for your flag. So see how I'm mixing all these colors here? You wanna make sure that you have enough color and not just a little bitty amount of paint like that, because then you'll just keep working, mixing your colors, you know, and trying to paint. So it's always important to be prepared and have your colors ready to go right here in this little area here, because it'll just help you um, just make your painting just a lot quicker and you don't have to stop and go so many times to mix colors. So now I'm gonna take this red off my brush and I'm just gonna touch this blue here and I'm gonna mix it here. Did you see what I did? I took a little bit of blue Took a little bit of blue, it's right there on my brush. And I'm taking it here and I'm mixing it here to make a darker reddish color, more like a purplish reddish color. Okay. Okay, so now I have two colors here. And all you need is just a little bit of blue. Okay, so now we are gonna paint this poppy, red poppy here. And it has a center that's going to be dark. So leave this shape alone here, leave the center alone. And on this one here, leave this center alone also. Okay, so remember how I said how important it is to have your colors ready here? So now your brush is clean and you're just gonna load your brush now. You're gonna load it with paint. So see how I just picked up the paint with the brush? It's full of color there. And you're gonna take it and you're gonna make your petal on this poppy here. Just bring it down. Look at how I'm just doing that. Okay, and I'm just leaving it alone now. Just leave it alone. Take a little bit more paint. Do this side. here, more paints. See how important it is to have this paint ready to go? Make these little petals. See how I'm just wiggling the brush around, just like that, and let this one dry. So don't go back in there and start fiddling with it more, just leave it alone. And you can move your paper if you wanna let those colors kind of bleed a little bit to each other. So just leave that alone. Now let's move on to this one over here. Okay, we're gonna move to the one at the top and then this little one here. We can do this little one here if you want. Let's do this little one. And this one has a little center also. Just like that, it's very abstract. It doesn't have to be perfect. Okay, so now I still have some red here on my brush. 
and I'm gonna turn my paper around like this so that I can have better access to the shape here, this little shape here. And I'm going down with the side of my brush. Down, see that? Three, it was just three strokes going this way, this way, and this way. Now I just picked up a little bit more paint and I'm gonna do this petal here. Down. And then you can just kind of curve the brush and lift. This one has a center in there. So we're gonna leave that center alone. We're gonna paint this shape here. Picking up more paint. Okay. Turning it around. Oh, I see a little one here that could probably be red. So I will go ahead and paint this one red. And then after that, what you can start doing what we'll start doing is painting the stripes. And so as you can see, I'm starting to run out of paint right here, my color. And um, so again, that's why it's important to have enough paint mixed. So I'm just gonna paint a little, I'm gonna mix a little bit more red here for the stripes. Okay. And the first stripe that's by the flag here is white. So I'm gonna go red, leave it white, red, leave it white, red, and you know, so on, okay? So with the tip of my brush, there's paint and I'm gonna turn my paper around and I'm just gonna start painting these stripes just like this. Just pretend like it's a little pin with the point of your brush. So there's one stripe. While it's wet, you can drop in a little bit more color. See how I'm doing that? Okay, now I'm gonna do the next stripe. Going down with my brush. Doesn't have to be exactly perfect, but you know, if you want, you can. You can drop in a little bit of more paint there, just like that. Okay, this one's white, so now this one's red. We have some people asking Hilda to go just a tad slower, if you don't mind. Okay, I will. Okay, so now I, I will do this stripe here. And don't worry, you'll have um, plenty of time. I will make sure that you have time to do this. And what's so nice is that um, Caitlin is recording this too. So you can do this painting again or with a friend or a relative. Yeah, that's great. What I actually will do is um, about in about a week or so, I'll have it posted on um, Valley Children's YouTube site. So, and I will try and cross post it onto our brand new epilepsy support website um, that is on Valley Children's main site as well. So you guys will have plenty of opportunity and then I can email all of you um, a copy to the link. So I will make sure to do that. Yes, that's, that's awesome. So at this point right here, as it's drying, you could keep dropping in a little bit more paint. So you can, while it's wet, the paint should move, but you know, with this heat, it might not, huh? Look, cause mine's not flowing, but you can add a little bit more paint to make it look like it has dimension in there. Like, you know, like it's got movement and Later towards the end, I'm gonna show you how to add a little shadow into your flag as well. 
can you see okay with the visual? It's it's not too dark in here for you. No, the, I think it's great. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Okay. So we're just deepening the values of these stripes here now with more red. I'm just taking a little bit more red and making these stripes a little bit darker in some areas. This is this is fun. Watercolors is relaxing. It's it's just a fun medium. All right. So there was one flower down here that should have been painted blue, but I think I'm just gonna go ahead and paint it um, red since I have these this color here. And I'm also gonna show you how you can use this darker red now on your poppies to, to give them a little bit more uh, value. See how you have the, the first layer and now this is the second layer and it's darker. That's what I'm gonna show you next on that. So with, the darker color that you had mixed, you know, you took a little bit of blue. Oh, and look at how my paint's starting to dry now. So I'm just going to add just a little bit of water to it to make it come back to, to life here because it was drying out with this heat. Um, so I just took some red and I just took a touch of that blue to make it a little bit darker red. And I'm taking that darker red color and I'm going to add it to the bottom of these poppy flower buds so at the bottom so just going to add a little bit here here and maybe over here and then on this one here and here and you don't have to do this but I, you know I want to show you how you can keep building up layers so with this color that I mixed it's darker in value you're just going to take the color and you can just kind of add a little bit a brush stroke you can use the tip and add little squiggly lines if you want. Just like that. Okay, so see what happens now? We have the first layer and you have a second layer and it gives it more interest. And where you want interest is sort of like in this area anyway, because this is where the flag is. So we were gonna give this one some value, this darker value too now. So I'm gonna turn it around. Okay. Just do a brush stroke. Oh, this is getting dry. So what I did is I just added a little bit of water to my brush because this is dry. It's, this is called dry brushing. And I just took a little bit of water and I took the edge and I'm softening that edge. And I'm just adding a little bit more here to the bottom. Okay. So I'm gonna mix, starting to run out of that red. This is why you wanna have enough water when you're painting, because if you don't, you're gonna end up, look, you can see how, see how it got dry and I can just, it's dry there. So you want water to activate your uh, paint. Okay. And I think that there was this one little flower here. I'm just gonna paint it red. I'm just doing abstract little brush strokes here like this, see? Because you don't have to be perfect, just make it just like that and just leave it, okay? And at this point here, you can keep build, since you have red, you can still keep building up these beautiful American red stripes on your flag. Now you can keep doing this. Okay, but now I think you're ready to kind of move on anyway with the, the white flowers. 
So we're gonna we're gonna now bring out these white flower shapes. And um, how you're gonna do that is you're gonna paint the centers yellow, just with the yellow color. So if you have one of these, just get yellow on your brush. So clean your brush, take that all that extra paint off your brush. And I'm gonna make an area here for just the yellow. Ooh, my paint's really drying with this heat here. See how I have yellow here? Just yellow. Okay. Now you're going to do the center of these white flowers that are left alone. Okay, so just take your yellow, just paint a center. See how easy that was? Just like that, just leave it. And then do the centers of the blue and purple flowers. Don't do the centers of these red ones though, because those are gonna be a darker color and I'm gonna show you how to mix that dark color. So go ahead and paint these little yellow ones there, okay? Everybody there, On everybody on board with me? Okay, now, since you have yellow here, this is what I want you to do next. I want you to just take a little bit of this red and mix it in one corner of the yellow here. So do you see how I'm getting like a little kind of orangey color here? You're gonna take that little orangey color and you're just gonna touch the yellow at the bottom and let it bleed. See how it just bleeds? Okay, I'll let you do that, get caught up doing that. So what I did is I took a little bit of the red color and mixed it in with the yellow. I mixed it up and I used the point of my brush to touch, just touch an area where the yellow paint was. So that yellow wouldn't look so flat because here you can see how there's not just a yellow color, all right? Oops. So do you see how your painting's starting to develop now? It all just takes, uh, watercolor painting is just doing things in stages, you know, letting some areas dry, um, uh, you know, just building it up. You know, what you don't wanna do is you don't wanna get stuck just in one little area, you know, painting one little thing, you know, cause you can get obsessed do it, doing just one area and forgetting about the rest of your painting. Um, in this lesson, I want to keep you kind of mo moving with the painting. And so um, now we're gonna keep moving with it. So now I'm gonna show you how to make the dark centers for the, these red poppies here, these red poppies here. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna mix your red and your blue together to get like a dark purple color. Or if you have this here and you have a dark color in here, you can use that color. That would make it easier too. So I'm gonna clean this area here, take this yellow off. And I'm gonna take some blue, just dark, rich blue here. And I don't wanna to touch this brush to that red because if I do, it's gonna dirty up that color. So what I like to do always is clean my brush, um, clean my brush all the time before I go into a different color so that I don't contaminate it and get it muddy. So I'm cleaning my brush. Now I can take this color here 
and see how it's on the brush. And I'm going to mix it to this color. And do you see how dark this color turned? So this is going to be now the center of your red poppies. And if I wanted to, I could really make it even darker by touching more of that blue and bringing it in. But you know, this is this, I think this is going to be dark enough. So are we ready to do the centers? Okay, so here's the flower. Here's the point of my brush. And I'm just going to add it to this little area here. You could even leave white if you wanted to in there to make it look more interesting. It's up to you. You're the artist for this painting. But see how it turned dark? the value, okay? This little one here, doesn't have to be perfect, just leave it a little abstract shape. Don't try to make it like a per perfect circle. Over here, turning it around and doing the center here, using the point of my brush. Now, if you really wanted to make these even more darker, you could just take your brush, clean it, take some blue, and while it's wet, you don't have to do this, but I'm just gonna show you, you can just put it in here and it would really make it even darker. Do you see what, hap what happened? It just made it a little extra darker. So you could do that if you wanted to. All right, I think we're moving along fine. Okay, so now you can see that you have these white shapes here. And what you're gonna do next now is you're gonna start building up dark colors, darker greens. Now we're gonna go back to the greens and we're gonna build these dark greens around these shapes here, these odd shapes. So don't cover all these uh, beautiful abstract white shapes. You know, try to think about just going around um, around these shapes here with the green. And that's what we're going to do next. Okay. So now we're going to start building up some of these layers and you're, you're going to see how um, to keep building it up. All right. So we're ready. So now what I want you to do is clean your area again. And we're gonna go back to the beginning where we mixed greens, but this time you're gonna make a darker green. See how dark this green is? And this green just had more blue and less yellow. So let's clean this area here. And I'll wait to make sure everybody is on board with me and that I'm not going too fast. So I will wait. Okay. So I'm just adding water again to my mixing area. And I'm going to take more blue. Looks like I might need more blue. More blue in the middle. See the water how it's moving? That means it's gonna flow on the paper really well. And it's not dry on my, my mixing palette here. Okay, now I'm gonna clean my brush. Take that blue off before I touch that um, yellow. Took the blue off, touching the yellow. See the yellow, mixing it over here. Now, do you see how dark this green got? And the reason why is because I only used a little bit of yellow and there's more blue here. So look how dark and rich this color is compared 
to these greens here, okay? And look at the flow of this color here that's mixed. It's, you know, you can see it moving around. And if it starts to get too dry because it's warm, just add a, a little bit of water and that will, you know, keep your colors flowing. So that way, when you put it on the paper, it will move. Okay, so are we ready? Okay, I think so. All right. So now this brush has this bluish green color that you're gonna add around these flowers here in this little area here. Okay, we wanna keep some of these light values in there. So, okay, so now I have paint on my brush. It's on the tip of my brush. And you're gonna use that, that tip to go around those white shapes. Okay, so just pretend like this is the pen with color on it and go around those shapes with that pen. See, look, do you see? Use the tip, take a little bit more paint. You could even go inside to exaggerate that white. Just go around that and see how the, the white flower starts to come forward. Okay, I'm gonna show you one more thing now, right here. When you have a hard edge like this, this is what you can do. You can clean your brush and just bring it down. See how I'm just bringing it down? With water, just clean water. Okay, while it's wet, you can just keep, keep getting a little bit more of that color and dropping it in there to keep building up those um, dark values. See that? Now I'm coming in a little bit more to give this uh, flower a little bit more of a, sh a shape that looks more like a daisy. Okay, do you see that? Okay, I'm gonna turn it around, going around. And now I'm gonna go with this dark color around these. So here I am with the point of the brush again. And I'm gonna come in to give that more of a shape, this petal. Just. Clean your brush. Soften that edge with just a, a brush that just has water, just blend out that edge. See how I just have the brush down and I'm just softly blending that edge out or you can just do that. While it's wet, you can take your brush, pick up color and drop in that color. So that way you can just kind of flow around that flower. So see what you're doing, you're, you're building it up. You're building up the value around this flower here. And you're gonna keep going around this one here and the bottom of this one here on this side. Okay, so let's just continue to do that. And if you have any questions or if I need to go a little bit slower, uh, please let Caitlin know and I will go a little bit slower. Let's see, I think you can understand what I'm doing here as you're watching me. See, I'm just going around that white shape. So you're barely like even lifting your brush up. You're just kind of yes. continuing to yeah. drag it, right? Right, so do you see the point there? Right there, that point, it has paint on it. And I'm just using that point. See how I'm just using that point? Okay, I'm using just the point of that brush to go around those little petals. And I'm and now I'm, just developing some of these little petal shapes with the color going around it. See the tip of the brush. And I'll do another one here on this side, just the tip. 
I'm going around these little petal shapes. All right, now let's go around this one here. We're, we're bringing these dark greens this way now over here on this side. It's not hard. It's just for, for you, some of you that are beginners, it may be hard because this is new and you know it's intimidating, but don't be afraid of this. You will only get better with practice and determination because nothing comes easy. When you're trying to learn a new language, it's hard. So look how I'm just using the point of my brush. Let's just pretend like this is a pin and just use it to go around these white imaginary little petals that you're developing here. Okay, now I'm gonna just use a little bit of this green on this side so that the white can come forward. Yeah, it, it's, it's not hard. It's, you know, it's just practice and doing it over and over that you will become a really good artist if you have that determination and that desire to want to keep getting better at this and to want to learn. You know, you can keep learning by looking at videos, um, looking at books, art books. And now I'm gonna soften these hard edges by just cleaning my brush, taking the brush on its side and pulling it out. Yeah, you can keep, you'll get better. Don't worry. Remember, this is an art lesson. It's to keep you interest in watercolor. This is a, this watercolor is a medium. There's so many different mediums. There's um, acrylics, there's oils, pastels. And now look, I'm just dropping in more of this green color just to keep building it up. Okay. Well, what's neat, Hilda, is that can you show us your other painting just to show people that you have done it a couple times now and they both look different? <laughs> like, oh, yes. Yeah, yes, right. Look. And so it's, I think that's the cool part is that you can even go back, like I go back probably one to two times, to be honest, and repaint it. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay. And each one looks different and you just get your technique gets better each time. Yes. And so see this right here, you know, I had let it completely dry. I probably could have done it just like this and leave it alone and let it dry. If you're tired, you know, you can definitely stop and just watch me paint. And then you can go back and look at the video and pick up where, um, you know, where if you got tired. But this one here, you know, I, put, I left it to dry and then I kept adding darker around it. So for example, I would let this dry, leave it, let it dry and then if you put another layer here of green, it's gonna look darker and richer, but this is an art lesson. So I wanna kind of keep going with the flow of the, of the energy here that we have all of us together. So now I'm going to um, show you because I'm, you know, I'm watching the time and I wanna make sure that we get to, to doing it all. So now what I'm gonna show you is how to add extra foliage, which is the fun stuff which is see these little branches coming out and these little leaves coming out. And then I added some splatter. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna add just a little bit of a wash inside that white flower. Do you see the gray? And then do you see the gray here on the flag and then the pull and then the outline? Because you know I wanna get to that, all of that too. So, okay. So for the foliage, I'm gonna show you first here on a little piece of paper. And for the foliage, you can mix dark greens on your mixing area. And, you know, again, have it ready. But what you're gonna do is you're gonna use the tip again, like a, like a pen, just make a line. You know, you can make little, little lines. You could even practice on a little piece of paper first, but see how I'm just barely touching the paper. If I'm barely touching the top of the paper, I'm gonna get a really thin line. If I press, I'm gonna get a thicker line, thicker blade of grass, okay. If you want to add little foliage, just press with the tip. See that? Little presses. Now, if you want great big leaves or medium-sized leaf, 
you're going to use more pressure pressing down. So you're going to press more. Look at how I'm turning my brush. I'm using my wrist to go this way. I'm going this way. This way. Okay, let's do it again right here. Press, lift. Press, lift, turn. Press, lift. Lift. I think that I might have done this in another lesson with you all, but it's so easy. And then you can change these colors. You know, you can take a light green and add a light green. You don't have to do the leaves all one color. You know, you're the artist. You can decide which colors to go. So what I want you to do now is look at your painting and kind of look to see where you can add um, maybe a little stem. Uh, where you can add extra foliage and then start adding little leaves, you know, little foliage here and there. So what I want you to do right now for a couple of minutes is mix your colors, your greens, and just do a little bit of extra foliage, okay? So I'm gonna give you a little time to do that and, and I'll do it with you, so. I'm gonna mix yellow, with this blue, so just play. You don't have to put your extra, this extra foliage that I'm talking about in the same place that I am. You know, you can just add it any place that you see it on your um, painting. This is the fun. This is the fun part is adding the the details, you know, some details, you know, you can add a stem to some of these flowers here. So we are just adding extra foliage here. I think that I'm gonna add just a little bit here. Isn't this fun? Are you guys enjoying this lesson? I hope so. I hope that it's not, didn't uh, make it too hard. And I hope that you will do it again, maybe do it again with um, a friend or family. So yes, we're just adding extra little foliage. You don't have to uh, do leaves. You could just do little, little stems, you know, just little stems coming down. You know, just, you can keep it simple. All right. Okay. So now I'm going to show you how you can add a little bit of color in some of these uh, white daisies, and especially the, these two here, because we need to kind of separate them. This they're connecting. So what you can do is just take a little bit of this pink color that you have here and put it on one side of the, of the flower. And see that automatically will separate the shapes, just doing that. And while you have your pink, you could just add a little bit on the inside, on one side of it, just like this. See that, how I just added it there? And you can add it to this side over here, just a little, it's just called a glaze, like a little glaze of color. Okay, I'm taking the same color and I'm gonna add it to this side, just glaze. 
See that, how simple that was? You can make one darker by just taking a little bit of extra color on your tip of your brush. And while it's wet, you can just drop it in there. See that? For interest. So this one's different from all of these. So it's always nice to have one different and not all the same. Okay, so now I'm going to show you how to mix a gray color for the shadow of the flag and the flagpole. And then we're going to build up some of these colors in some of these flowers where it needs it. Okay, and then I'm going to show you how to do the, the white stars. All right, so for the gray, you're just going to take really all these colors that you have here and sort of mix them because when you mix these three colors here, you can, you can get a gray. So just take a little bit of this pink, a little bit of this green color that you have here. And you, you can see already how I made a gray. Do you see the gray here? See how the gray just kind of sort of made itself. Take a little bit of that. Okay, I'll wait for you to mix a gray, just a little light gray color, nothing too dark, just light. So there's a gray. And now you're gonna do your flagpole with the gray, with the point. And you're going to do the outline right here where it was white. Okay. And what I did is I just took this brush and I just kind of added a little shadow in here to make it look like it's um, got movement in it. You know how a flag kind of sort of has like a, 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 a fold or a wave to it. I just, I just needed a little bit of a gray to make it look like um, it was kind of bending. Okay. And now if you need to make your flagpole a little bit uh, darker in gray, you'll just mix this gray here darker. So you can take the blue, the red, and a little bit of that yellow and make it darker. With less water, it'll become darker. So you can see now that this is becoming darker. Okay. Okay. That's how you do the flagpole. And that's how you can add a little bit of gray into your flag. So it doesn't look like just completely a flat, uh, flat lines of white. So at this point, you can now start to build up some of these flowers too. You can start to just use, because they should be dry. So you can take more of your blue, And just right on top of some of these blue flowers that you have, you can just add a little bit more blue right around the center like this. Doesn't have to be perfect, but do you see what happens? You're, you're adding another layer of color on top of what was already there and it just gives it more depth, more interest. And then I'll just do this one here. So now you're building up some values wherever you decide to do it. You don't have to do it, but you know, I'm just showing you how you can do this. Okay. Um, and then you can just keep adding, um, you could even add more red to this one here. So let me just show you. I'll just mix red. So less water, darker red on top of this red here will make it darker and richer, as you can see right now, watch. See, look at the value. 
just like that. Okay, now I'm just gonna add it up here and turn it. And so what's happening now is you're, you're learning to build up your painting. You know, you're adding uh, more value and it's just looking more richer with color, more vibrant with color. And, um, you know, you can certainly keep adding a little bit more to the stripes with the red because it dried some. So you could add, and you can go back in there again and add a little bit more if you want it to. It's up to you. Okay. You could keep adding a little bit more green. You could mix your greens and keep adding a little bit more green if you wanted to. Right under here, you know, you can just add a little bit more. I'm just showing you that you, know, that you can do this. You don't have to. But see how I'm using my brush and just kind of going around those shapes with the point of it, just here at the bottom. And to me, this is kind of rough looking here, these edges. So I'm gonna show you how you can soften hard edges. This is nicer. See how it's blended soft? And look at this. See how hard these edges kind of look here. They're kind of rough looking. So what you're gonna do is you're just gonna put water in your brush, take that extra water off, and you're going to kind of like use this like a like a little scrubber. Don't scrub too hard, but you know just a little bit. So what you're going to do is take your brush. See how I have it down, and just kind of brush. See, I'm squiggling, and that softened that. So again, let's do these right here. See how rough they are. Just take your brush and scrub. See that, how nice that is now? And so again, right here, look at how rough these look. Take your brush, it's still a little damp. It still has a little bit of moisture in there. Let's take it and just kind of wiggle it. Okay. So this is how you soften edges, just like that. And if you wanted to, you could even add uh, now that you soften the edges, you can go back in there and add, you know, a stem and, or, you know, a stem or a couple of leaves in there because you can see them better. See how I just added a couple of stems there. Okay. And so now I'm going to show you how I did the, the little stars. If you don't have white like this, it is called gouache. You can just use a white pen. Let me show you. If you have a pen like this, and you can do this later, you don't have to do it now, but let me just show you. You can use a pen like this to make little stars, or you can use this sort of thing here with the toothpick. I'm gonna to show you how I did it. What I did is I took a little bit of paint and the tip of the toothpick there, I just did little, little taps like this, you know, just little. You can just see how I did this. Can you see? Yeah. So you can do this, you know, like that. Or let me show you the other way with a pen. Or if you have a white um, pencil, you can do it with a pencil also. Let me make sure there's... Sometimes these get a little dry. Don't you forget everyone, you will be tested on how many stars should be on your flag. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, this one might be a little dry, but you know, if you have a pen, oh, here it goes. You can do the stars like this with a pen. See how um, I'm just sketching little stars like that. So you can definitely do it with, with a white uh, pen or white paint. And then also, if you have your pen, you could just sign your painting here at the bottom. Uh, you don't want to ever sign too close to the bottom or to the edge, because if you put a mat around it, you don't want to cover 
your signature. Um, what I do, how I sign my paintings is I have a little, I have a skinny brush like this. It's called a rigger or, or a script brush. And this is a size number one. And it's just really thin. And what I like to do is I like to use one of the colors that I used in my painting. And what I do is I just add paint to it. And you can first practice on a little piece of paper, you know, pretend like this is a, a pencil and you're going to either hand script it or you can just use your initials on there if you want. But you want to make sure that you do have enough paint on your brush so that it can flow. And this is how I would sign it. I would just hold it down like this or you can use a pencil first to sign your name with the pencil and then you have that as a guide and then you would just sign it. So I'll just sign mine like this. And see again, it's important to have enough water in your paint so that it can flow. And then the extra touches that I also enjoy doing is taking some of these colors here and I'll get it really loose and watery. See how loose and watery that is? And it's on my brush. And this is just the extra little fun things that I enjoy doing and it's just splattery. A little bit of splattering, see this? Just a little, little places. Just like that, and then just leave it. And you know, if you feel like you're tired and just leave it alone. And then tomorrow, if you if you look at your painting and you see that maybe your stripes on your flag need to be darker, you know, just add another layer of um, this color red on top of some of your stripes and make it darker and richer. See, it's already getting a little bit darker and richer there. If you feel like this blue is not dark enough, go in there and put another layer of blue in there. You know, but it's, you know, it's up to you how you want to develop the painting. But um, I hope that you liked the lesson and that you will do this again. Like I said, it's not easy in the beginning when you're learning something, but the more you do it, the better you're going to get. So if you have any questions or if you would like for me to go over one more thing that maybe I went too fast you can please ask me or you can look at the video again and you know you can go from there so i appreciate you guys letting me teach you today <laughs> does anybody have any questions feel free to ask questions guys if you have any questions or type them in the screen and i will go ahead and get that to hilda and see if we're getting a lot of thank yous hilda oh well, I hope that you do this painting project again with um, a friend or a child or, you know, just try it again, maybe do it without the flag and do uh, the flowers, just the flowers and make a beautiful spring bouquet. Remember, you're going to start with the background first around the shapes. Look at the video and just practice it. This is great. We really, really appreciate your time and um, sharing with us. And I think um, this is really awesome just to be able to spend time with our families and yeah. hang out a little bit and relax and <laughs> enjoy <laughs> painting um, and learning new skills, too. I think that um, that's kind of the yeah. biggest thing. You know, in, just, in, you can do something in, that's new. Yeah. In watercolor, there are so many styles and so many techniques to um, to paint. So this is one technique. There are so many other ways. There are beginners. There are just harder ways of doing things. But, you know, I like to teach the lessons in steps for people to understand and follow. And hopefully I, I went at a good pace for everybody. Yeah, absolutely. I think this was a lot. Um, it was it was easy to follow. And um, I know I enjoy going back and pausing the video and attempting to do it again. Um, so good. I will make sure that I will get the video up. Um, I'll talk to my team and get it up hopefully within the next week um, and then send you guys the link if you would like. Um, most of you know how to get a hold of me. Feel free to email me. Um, it's super simple. Just epilepsy support at valleychildrens.org. Um, and um, there's Hilda. Hey, Hilda, nice to see the face behind the painting. <laughs> so we really, really appreciate um, your time and 
you know, your, your efforts in planning this for us and creating a special painting for us to celebrate the 4th of July. Um, so everyone go out and have a super safe 4th of July. Um, try to stay out of the heat as much as possible, but um, be safe with your fireworks if you guys are doing fireworks and, um, you know, just really appreciate it. So thank you, Hilda. Thank you. Bye, everybody. All right, Happy I'll see forward. you next time. Thank okay, you. Thank you, Caitlin. You're welcome. Okay.